Alright, now this is a video about just measuring formats. So I have a sound here that I've uh, recorded into Pratt. If I play it, I can hear it. Uh, and it happens that, let's say here is a vowel whose formants I want to measure. Uh, what I'll do first is select the duration of the vowel. I notice that the things on either side are consonants by listening to them. I can hit this SEL button, select, uh, and that zooms way the heck in. Uh, it's actually, it can be a bit hard to pick stuff out here. If you want, you can back off a little bit, uh, just so you can see, oh yeah, here's other sounds on either side. Uh, in fact, if I zoom into that selection, I actually do still see these dark bands, the formants. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit for sanity's sake. Um, and then all, all you really need to do is click on the formants, find as close as you can somewhere right in the middle of the formant. Here's the first one. Middle of the formant, I have 618 hertz. I can read off the left side here. I'm going to go into a notepad and say uh, for the eh. Uh, this is just notes for myself, so it's okay if it's not phonetic characters. F1 equals 618 hertz. Fractions of a hertz isn't really a, a meaningful thing to record, so feel free to round it to the nearest whole number. Go up to the next dark band here. There we go. Notice that I'm making these uh, marks in the middle. Uh, things can happen near the end that are actually more reflective of the consonants on either side than the vowel, them, the vowel itself. So try to go for the middle. Here F2 I've got 1696. And we'll measure F3 as well. Third formant up here, 2463. Okay. Uh, when you submit uh, an assignment, there will be a form to enter these things into, but while you're doing your raw measurements, it's best to put them in a notebook. It can be print notebook, whatever. I'm not going to see this. Uh, I, the instructor, I'm not going to see this. I'm just going to see what you uh, record, what you submit. Uh, but make the record yourself for each vowel. Move over. Measure. Here's the er. Uh, you'll notice F1 becomes quite dark, sorry, quite faint. And F3 is really low. F2 is pretty close to it. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out here is diphthongs. Now, diphthongs are traditionally two vowels in sequence, but you get about essentially the same effect when you have a vowel followed by a consonant as in or. And you'll see that you know th this formant here, the first formant, seems to hold pretty steady. The second formant actually starts off merged with that, essentially, and then it raises a little bit. And the third formant starts way the heck up here at 2301, and it takes a nosedive down to 1578, thereabouts, right? So what are the formant values? In fact, with diphthongs and sequences of a vowel and an approximant such as this, you have, in the ideal situation anyway, a moderately stable formant structure for the first part. You have a transition period. And then you can have a moderately stable formant pattern for the second part. For our assignment, I'm really just interested in the first part of the diphthong. So find that stable region and then pick the formants out of the middle of that. Okay. Uh, with the O, you may have, like me, uh, in this, a very closely bunched two formants. And you can tell that they're two formants because they then diverge later on in the diphthong. Uh, how can we tease them apart? We have various tools at our uh, 
uh, within reach. The best one is this spectrum menu here, spectrogram settings. Make that up. Uh, this tells us what we're going to view. So you see here, this spectrogram that we're, we've got goes from 0 hertz at the bottom up to 5,000 hertz, which is great if we want to get a broad picture of what's happening in speech. But we can zoom in. Let's say we zoom to just down up to 3,000 hertz. And you see things stretch out a little bit. We could even go to 2,000 hertz, zooming in a little bit more. We actually aren't getting these two formants teased apart very much. But that is one thing that you could do. You could do that in general just to get slightly more precise formant measures. Another thing you can do is change the window length. Now, we may or may not get into the fine details of what window length is and why it has the effects that it does on the spectrogram, but uh, you'll notice if I change this to a shorter period, so from 0 0.02 to 0 0.01 seconds, the uh, spectrogram starts to look different. If I change it to half of that, I'm getting blur in the vertical dimension and I'm getting this division between uh, vertical striations, we call them. We call them voicing pulses because these actually line up in the waveform with the bursts of energy as the vocal folds collide with each other. Now if, on the other hand, I were to move in the other direction and make this longer, say 50 milliseconds, then I get horizontal striations. These are not formants. These are actually the harmonics of speech. And again, this isn't really helping me to distinguish the formants either. Uh, what I probably want is something in between. You can see here, the 10 millisecond window, I have a bulge of sorts here and a bulge down here. So I can sort of tease apart two different formants. One other tool that I have at my, uh, in my belt here, if I choose that portion of the sound that I'm interested in, the stable first part of the diphthong, and I say I want to view a spectral slice, this is going to give me a spectrum of just that portion of the sound that I have selected. So this is the energy, the overall energy that's present in that portion. Um, from zero up to our Nyquist frequency, half the sampling frequency. Now if we go down, <coughs> pardon me, if we go down to about 5,000 hertz, so about the same window size that we had in the spectrogram, we have a little bit more to work with here. We can see one very early peak, that's the voicing itself, and then this is our broad range of the, the darkness of the formant from about 375 to about 775 hertz. Now if we go back to the spectrogram, there's 375, 375, 775. So that is that that range. And you'll notice that I have a high peak and a slightly lower. These individual peaks are probably the harmonics. I have a high harmonic, lower harmonic, high harmonic. So in this case the spectrum is allowing me to pick out here's a peak and here's a peak performance. And then I'm going to change the spectrogram settings back up. So you can see our third formant is up here in the 2271 range, and that's about where we're seeing this peak. So we have voicing, formant, formant, big dip, and then another formant. So the spectrum can complement the spectrogram and really help us tease apart close together formants when we're lucky. Okay, so that should give you the tools that you need to measure formants in your recordings that you do for the vowel acoustics assignment.
notice that spectrum actually becomes an object here. 